Alright. So, without further ado, let's start all the Eclipse bosses. The ship I'm going to be using is the Golden Highwind, the best ship in Kingdom Hearts 3 that you can get. Of course, you can always build your own, but I personally like like to use. So the first battle we'll be going with is this enemy. The enemy known as the Supreme Warrior. Don't let looks fool you, he is very strong. He's much stronger than the Astro Warrior you find in Starlight Way. As you can see, most of his shots have tracking, so... There's a bit of a problem right there. And he'll occasionally shoot his rocket. Well, he's a pretty low HP already, so, I mean... It's pretty simple. I just gotta stay at the top of the screen. And just like that, Supreme Warrior's down. Wait. There he goes. That's just one, that's just one of six. Next one is going to be along this side. Also in this game, it combines three enemies. You got your simple heartless, the nobodies from Kingdom Hearts 2, and they got the Aversed from Birth by Sleep, all in one. Except in the Oceans Between, it's mostly Heartless. So, nothing too hard. The only aspect I like about this game, it's free room. You can actually, like, roam around the world as you see fit. Or the ocean between, that is. It say it didn't have to like go through a certain mission just to get through, just to get to a world. You can actually free roam and actually travel the worlds. Although there's gonna be that one enemy that tries to stop you. Also in this game, there is no S rank. The other, the highest rank is A. I know it's saddening, but trust me, that was the purpose of it. But what's different about Kingdom Hearts 3 is it's much easier in terms of combat. But the critical mode for this game is an absolute nightmare. So I've heard by critics. And, play, and people who play the game. Critical Mode in this game is nothing like Kingdom Hearts 2, Birth by Sleep, or Kingdom Hearts 1 for that matter. From what I gather, much difficult, and you need to be patient. A lot. So it's kind of like Dark Souls. Except... Not really. That's Countdown 11. So that's a pretty easy one. Next up, we need to go around to the other side once again. And there is another red four star boss. However, this one's not the Supreme Warrior. 
This one is the Colossus Pyramid. Giant Heartless Mac. But very easy. Attacks are too linear and most of the parts on him can be destroyed. As you can see, really simple. Not much thinking involved. Next one is gonna be on this side. And this one's a this one's an orange four star. And this one is Speed Skirmish 11. The difference between Countdown and Speed and Skirmish? Countdown, you take out as many enemies as you can within the given time limit. In Speed Skirmish, you have to take down a certain number of enemies. Is with an unlimited time limit. And since there's only 200 enemies, it's pretty easy for me to complete this one. The coolest aspect about this game there are much, other, there are many more ships than just like, just the High Wind, the Invincible, and the Falcon. We got like Omega, Ultros, Endymion, you know, ships like that. And that's the Speed Skirmish. So, quite simple. Next one is down below. And yes, there are going to be turrets trying to stop us. But because we can use a roll to completely tech their shots, we barely take damage. This enemy is the Scarlet Shark. Basically a remodeled version of the Dread Shark you fight in the Misty Yeah, Misty Stream. I can't remember the name for a sec. This guy's pretty simple, all he does is just fire lasers, and then when he tackles you, he can easily avoid to the side. All the enemies here have insane ex insane hit points. Well, insane hit and hit point bars, for that matter. But they're, but they're extremely easy. When he opens his mouth, he's completely vulnerable. Hey, he's setting a record. Alright. Last one is directly up top. Now, normally, if this is your first time doing this, and you've defeated all the enemies, all the sides of this giant thing would glow, and the main enemy would appear. If you go up to the top, I'll show you what the main enemy is. And boy is he a doozy. He's a five star 
red. This is the main enemy, known only as the Omega Machina. He's basically a much tankier Colossus Pyramid. That takes many more hits to take down. And it says two segments. He has four segments. So this guy's no slouch. To get an Eric on this, you need at least 2.5 million points. Yeah. That's quite a bit. And there we go. There's his top side down. Now we go on to the bottom. Also, the music in this game, it's really nice. Some of the music is from Kingdom Hearts 2, some Birth by Sleep, Recoded, Chain of Memories, 358 in Two Days. There's just a ton of music in this game. And we're closing the 2.5 million mark. Which we should be getting any moment now. Oof. That took a lot of damage. Oh, whatever. Alright, here's the next segment. Shooting at the skull. Random pink orbs that fly at you. Just dance to avoid. That's over. His main core re is revealed. However, it's much weaker than any normal component. And it's pretty easy to take down. And down goes the Omega Machina. Oops. I knocked over the camera. Just like that, the Omega Machina is take down. Normally, if you beat it, you would get an Orichalcum Plus, which is a required material, to create the ultimate weapon for Sora. Yes, there's an ultimate weapon in this game, and it's way cooler than any ultimate weapon we've seen previously. But well, that's about it for this video, so... Next video, we'll be doing the Keyblade Graveyard's Secret Bunt Easy Boss. Well then, this is Gaming Master, signing out. Peace.